Journey Youth is Destiny Church's middle and high school ministries. Our mission is to create community and equip parents and youth on the trek through school and to adulthood. To learn more about us and how you can get plugged in, go to discoverdestiny.org slash youth.
So have you ever noticed in TV and in movies that when you see a powerful person, they're either like really, really good or they're really, really bad. There's rarely ever anybody in the middle. I mean, the most interesting people, you know this, are the people that are super awesome or they are terrible leaders. They're superheroes or they're super villains. And in the series, we've been talking about the idea of being powerful and specifically how we all have powerful people in our lives, people in positions of leadership, people in positions of authority, and sometimes, just like in the movies, those leaders are awesome. Sometimes they're inspiring and helpful and encouraging. They're all the good stuff. You know them. It's your favorite teacher. And even if you're not always happy with what they tell you to do, most of the time we follow what they say because we trust them. We like them. We respect them. But you know this. <laughs> At the same time, we all know what it feels like to have a real life example of a person in power or a person with authority who, well, should not be a powerful person. And last week we talked about how Jesus is the best example of how to use power. That he introduced this idea of an upside down kingdom, a way of thinking about the world that is upside down or different than the way that everyone else thinks about it, especially when it comes to power and authority. That leaves us with a question, doesn't it? What about when powerful people don't exactly lead like Jesus would? I mean, what do you do when you have a leader or a boss or a teacher or a coach who is lazy? What do you do when they're disrespectful or when they discriminate? What do you do when they're just wrong? What do you do when the person who has the power doesn't deserve the power that they have? I mean, what about the teacher who could not care less about their actual students and only cares about the grades? They love science, but they hate sophomores. What about the boss at your after-school job? The one who makes decisions that you don't agree with or treats the other employees really unfairly? Or what about, I mean, this is personal, what about the adults in your life who talk about being a Christian and they also talk bad about everybody else? What then? I mean, are we just required to be good followers of bad leaders? And is that even what God really wants? Like, does God really want me to just blindly follow somebody who isn't kind, isn't selfless, isn't respectable, and doesn't deserve the power they have just because they have the power? Or is it okay to ignore them? Or in my case, is it okay to make fun of them? Especially if they're really funny? Like, if the person is a bad leader, do I have to be a good follower? Those are really good questions. And I bet all of us have asked them at some point or another. I mean, dealing with people and authority who don't exactly live up to their responsibility, that never goes away, by the way. Even as an adult, that never goes away. The truth is, we will 
always have powerful people in our lives, people who have more power or authority than we do. And although this is complicated, the good news is that God has given us a starting point for how to respond to a powerful person, no matter how they're using their power. In ancient Israel, there was a powerful king named David. But long before he was king, David had a lot of experience with powerful people. I mean, maybe you heard this story. As a kid, David's dad basically ignored him, overlooked him, um, and there was this like major opportunity for his family, and David's dad just completely left him out of it. And as a teenager, David faced off with a giant named Goliath who had been bullying the Israelite people for a long time. And not many years after that, David had to decide how to deal with the most powerful person in the country. At the time, it was the king. Let me give you a little bit of background. God chose David to be the next king of Israel. There was a slight problem. Israel already had a king, and the king's name was Saul. And Saul, he wasn't exactly ready to leave. So King Saul decided he needed to take action. I mean, this kid, David, was a threat, so he decided to kill him. And what do you do when an evil king is coming to kill you? David did exactly what any of us would have done. He ran for his life. For years, David literally was on the run, and that's where we pick up the story. After Saul returned from fighting the Philistines, he was told that David had gone into the wilderness of the En Gedi. So Saul chose 3,000 elite troops from all Israel and went to search for David and his men near the rocks of the wild goats. At the place where the road passes some sheepfolds, Saul went into a cave to relieve himself, but as it happened, David and his men were hiding farther back in that very cave. Okay, in case you're wondering if you heard that right, you did. King Saul takes 3,000 troops to go hunt down David, all because Saul was the type of leader who gets a little jealous when somebody else has success. He was the literal worst. Then, on the way to go kill David, Saul walks into a cave to take a bathroom break, and David and his guys are hiding in that exact cave just a little further back, and he doesn't see them. Now they're tucked into the back of a cave, and Saul is all alone. Now is your opportunity, David's men whispered to him. Today the Lord is telling you, I will certainly put your enemy into your power to do with as you wish. So here was David's chance. Years of being hunted down finally came down to this moment. Saul had been a terrible authority figure in David's life, and now David had the chance to do something about it. One slash of the sword and David's problems are over forever. His own men with him were begging him to do it, but look at what he decided to do instead. So David crept forward and cut off a piece of the hem of Saul's robe hem of his robe. That's a weird flex. All of David's backup guys had to be confused. I mean, this was like, this was supposed to be the day when David was finally going to get revenge. He was going to stop hiding. He was going to become the king. He was going to kill Saul. But that's not what happened at all. In fact, Saul left the cave without ever knowing David was there. And while David could have stayed hidden in the cave, he actually runs out and sees Saul and gets his attention and shows him the piece of cloth in his hand, the piece of cloth that he had cut off from Saul's robe. And at that moment, Saul knew that David had the chance to kill him and didn't. And what David did next explained it all. He says, may the Lord judge between us. Perhaps the Lord will punish you for what you are trying to do to me, but I will never harm you. As the old proverb says, from evil people come evil deeds. So you can be sure I will never harm you. Who is the king of Israel trying to catch anyway? Should he spend his time chasing one who is as worthless as a dead dog or a single flea? May the Lord therefore judge which of us is right and punish the guilty one. He is my advocate and he will rescue me from your power. Now listen, David could have taken down Saul right then and there. And if we're being honest, he had a good reason to do it. Saul deserved it. But what David realized is that even though Saul had all this power and all this authority, David still had the power to decide what role he was gonna play in the story. Here's what I mean. See, David quoted this saying that he had heard growing up, from evil people come evil deeds, meaning evil people do evil stuff. And he's basically saying, if I do this, if I take Saul's life, 
I am gonna become one of those evil people. If I do this, I am no better than Saul. And I'm not gonna be one of those people. King Saul, you may be like that, but not me. Saul may have been a killer, but in that moment, David decided, I'm not gonna be like him. Saul may have been disrespectful, but David would never stoop to his level. Saul may have been wrong and deserving of disrespect, but David knew that in honoring Saul, even when he didn't deserve it, David was exercising his own power and ultimately he was honoring God. I mean, talk about an upside down way to use your power. David could have used his strategic position to his advantage to kill Saul in that cave, but in God's upside down kingdom, David knew that the best way to use his power was for good. In fact, one way to say it is this, in the upside down kingdom, honor is greater than power. And we have the same opportunity. We can choose to be honorable no matter who is leading us. Their actions, no matter who they is, don't have to determine our actions. I mean, does that mean you always obey? You always comply? You just do whatever they say without thinking? No, of course not. David ran for his life. If he had obeyed, he would have died. He did decide, however, that no amount of Saul being evil could force David to become evil as well. It wasn't worth it. He wouldn't become like the person he was running from. Now, hopefully you'll never find yourself in that situation, but let's be honest, you may find yourself in other situations where the person with the power isn't acting like they should. I mean, there may be times when ideally the right thing to do would be to respectfully and humbly say no to a powerful person in your life because they're leading you against what is right or what is wise. And listen, I mean, let's just, let's just be brutally honest for a second. In the world today, there is so much injustice and we're not talking about honoring injustice. We're talking about choosing to be an honorable person. What does it look like to be honorable in a racist or abusive or an unfair system that's used to oppress people? Well, I mean, it looks like disrupting those systems. Sometimes being honorable looks like calling out what is wrong. Maybe it looks like talking to your principal if a teacher is discriminating against your classmates, or maybe you need to respectfully disagree when an adult says something rude or hurtful about other people. If any leader is hurting you, or if a leader is asking you to hurt yourself or to hurt other people, listen, this is an authority you shouldn't have to listen to. We all know that, but figuring out how to not listen to an authority, it's really challenging. So don't ever hesitate to seek out another trusted adult to help you think through this and plan for how you'll respond when you face those moments. Because it is possible that unless your life or your safety is on the line, there will be times in life where you have to be honorable to an authority, but you can't obey. But let's be honest, that's not every time, right? I mean, those are the exceptions. Most of the time, your teachers, your coaches, your parents, they're not asking you to do something illegal or immoral. But there will be times when their actions aren't great, when you're frustrated, when they're just annoying, when you feel like they could be doing a better job or when they disappoint you. And in those moments, the most important thing you can do is decide who you want to be in that response, not decide whether or not they deserve the power that they have. In other words, you can choose to be honorable no matter who is powerful. The truth is, we all know this is easier said than done. So to wrap up our time together, I wanna to talk about some really practical ways to be honorable no matter who's powerful. First, think about what you say and how you say it. I mean, if you're talking to a teacher or a parent or a step parent, if you're talking to one of your coaches, you can choose to speak in a way that communicates respect. And if you have to argue or disagree with your stepmom, you can argue in a way that's calm and uses words to find solutions, not uses words to make the other person look stupid. I mean, put simply, your words are your choice and you can choose to honor someone with your words even if you don't agree with that person in the moment. Also, remember this. Remember that leaders are human too. It's easy to see powerful people as not people. 
It's easy to see coaches or, or parents or teachers as if they're some kind of superhero who's never gonna make mistakes, but you know that's not true. There are gonna be times they make mistakes. There are gonna be times when a teacher messes up or when your boss at your like after school job, they're gonna get it wrong from time to time. And in those moments, you can respond honorably by treating them the way that you would wanna be treated if you were in the same situation. And third, and this is so hard, I know, the third thing you can do is speak up. I mean, like I said before, sometimes the best way to be honorable is to speak up when something is not safe, when you're being hurt, or when what's being asked of you is just not right or not healthy. Knowing when to speak up or finding the right words is important. It's also really tricky. And that's why I want everyone here to have a small group leader and to have other adults in your life who care about you, who want what's best for you and who can guide you in situations that are really tough like this. And if you ever find yourself in a situation where you need to speak up to a powerful person, or you think you might need to speak up to a powerful person, I want you to make a plan for what that conversation looks like. I want you to talk with your family or talk with your small group leader about what that plan is and what you're gonna say. Those are the kinds of decisions you shouldn't ever have to figure out alone. And the thing to remember in all of this is God is inviting us to participate in an upside down kingdom in a totally different way of seeing power. He's inviting us to participate in a way of life where honor is greater than power. And that means you can be honorable no matter who is powerful. That can be difficult, but it's what Jesus modeled and it's what he invites us to be a part of. And I promise it's the best way to see and treat power when it comes to making decisions now that will help you grow into the best possible version of yourself. You can start living in that upside down kingdom kind of way today. Now listen, I know this whole conversation about people who are leaders or people who are empowered, it's, it's just complicated because so many of us, we have different experiences with people in power and almost every one of our experiences is unique. And I mean, for instance, even though David was honorable in this story that I shared today, he did not always get it right in every situation. In fact, I would encourage you to go back and read more of his wild story when you get a chance. But no matter your situation, I hope that this week you talk with your small group and you talk with your leader about the specific authorities in your life and how to handle them. Because the truth is you'll always have powerful people in your life. Some will be great, and some will not, but you can decide for yourself who you're gonna be and how you're gonna respond. No matter who's in charge, you can choose to be honorable. That's powerful. Thanks for joining Journey Youth Online. If you have any questions, need support, or just wanna get connected with us, you can email us at youth at discoveredestiny.org or learn more at discoveredestiny.org slash youth.